got a box. I love getting boxes, and this one is from Australia. Um, complete other side of the planet. And you know what? It's, it's a lot lighter than I thought it would be. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's inside. I have an inkling. But uh, exactly what it is, I don't know yet. Um, paper. Paper. Ooh. Paper. Ooh. So this is a 22 centimeter sawtooth pan. Uh, it is one piece low carbon steel or mild steel um, that is wrought rather than cast. So cast iron, my understanding is that the hot iron is poured into a mold. This is made from one piece of steel that is formed. Um, and then it's, it's shot blasted, so it's got this sort of really nice finish to it that will hold uh, seasoning really well, I would think. Um, so I'm a big fan of cast iron. I've got probably 25, 30, 40 cast iron pans at this point. Some have been in the family um, for longer than anyone can remember. And this is my first brand new pan. I don't think I have a cast iron pan that was made after like, you know, 1920. So I'm really interested to try this one out because it's, it is much lighter uh, than a cast iron pan. But it should hold heat in the same way and it should, um, it should actually heat up faster. So now that we've got this pan, let's, uh, let's go through the process that they recommend for seasoning. So the way the manufacturer recommends seasoning these pans is to take a high smoke point oil, and I'm using grapeseed oil, but you could use rice bran oil, soybean oil, you could use vegetable oil. Just don't use olive oil or coconut oil. You wanna warm the pan up slightly, just on a stove top. Not so hot that you can't touch it, but you know, warmer than room temperature. You wanna give it a thin, light coating of oil. So you put on very little oil, you rub it all over, and then you wipe it off with another rag. And you wanna wipe it off like you sort of realize suddenly that you shouldn't have put that oil on at all. You wanna preheat your oven to 250 degrees Celsius, which is about 485 degrees Fahrenheit. And once you've got the pan oiled up, put it in the oven upside down and leave it in there for an hour and a half. After the hour and a half is up, turn the oven off, leave the door closed, leave the pan inside, and don't touch it. Just leave it for eight or nine hours to cool down really slowly. And this is what it looks like after that seasoning process. Now the instructions say one to three times. I was in no rush to get this pan into use, so I did it five or six times. I, I kind of lost count. I was doing a bunch of other things at the same time. Really was no problem to, uh, to just keep doing it over and over. And you can see it's taken on a really dark jet black color. The finish is really nice inside. And the key to the process is don't over oil. If you put too much oil on, it would be really sticky. And this isn't sticky, it just feels really slick. So, the, uh, the ultimate test of a new pan is cooking in it. So let's make some bacon. And today I'm frying up some of our homemade bacon. Uh, maybe check out one of those videos while you're on the channel.
So overall, on my first run through, I'm pretty impressed with this pan. I like the way it heats up. I like the way it holds heat. I like the way it releases the food. Um, and cast iron and, and this type of pan is no exception to that cast iron rule. A lot of people believe the hype that their properly seasoned cast iron pan is going to be as non-stick as Teflon. And that's just not the case. No matter how good your cast iron pan is seasoned, it's not going to be as no stick as Teflon, um, unless you use a lot of oil. It's going to stick a little bit. The idea is that it sticks, but it releases. Um, nothing gets burned on. So this falls into that realm, and, and I am very impressed with this pan. Um, I'd love to get my hands on, on a few more different sizes. I think they would be a great addition to the kitchen. Uh, handle is cool after frying in it. So you'll be seeing a lot more of this pan in the test kitchen in the future. Uh, thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.